investments, bless the Lord, um, our success, or what we think is success, and we've looked at um, ambition, and tonight we're just going to look at, at the future, at the future, what our future uh, holds. Um, a frog went to a fortune teller, served him right, I suppose, and uh, she said, you're going to meet a beautiful young woman. From the moment she sets eyes on you, she will have such a great desire to know all about you. She will be compelled to be close to you. You will fascinate her. The frog said, where will that be? Will it be a singles club? Fortune says, no, in a biology class. There we are. Let's teach you if we go there. But it's an amazing um, how people are fascinated. In fact, um, caught up with wanting to know what is going to happen tomorrow or the future, yet um, don't live for today. You see, we can be so caught up with tomorrow, we miss living for today. Um, I, I've been reading some people, and they were, they were saying about um, those people who, who predict the future, and some call them experts. But one man was saying, those experts, you may as well get a, a chimpanzee with a dart and throw it in a board. And some of, the, some of those are more uh, expert than those who um, speak these things. Listen to some of these predictions of uh, the past. Um, law will be, listen to this one, law will be simplified over the next century. Lawyers will have diminished and, and their fees would have been vastly curtailed. 1893. How wrong was he? Um, a journalist. Uh, how about this, this teacher? It doesn't matter what he does, he will never amount to anything. <laughs> Some, that was said over many of us, I'm sure. Uh, that was um, Albert Einstein's teacher. He knew a lot, didn't he? Um, by, I predict the internet said, we'll go spectacularly supernova, and in 1996, we'll collapse catastrophically. Ah, well done, mate. That was clever. Um, how about this guy? I wish this guy was true. By 1960, he said, he wrote in 1936, by 1960, work will be limited to three hours a day. Of course, I oh, will careful. I bite my tongue then. I'm going to say something then. But that's not for most of us, of course. Um, how about this numpty? Uh, get rid of the guy with pointed ears, said an NBC executive to Gene Rodbury, when they started Star Trek. There we are. Get rid of him. <laughs> Mr. Spock. You can't get rid of Mr. Spock. But we have people who are investing millions into the future, or what they think is the future. Um, many people, um, they say as many as 70 million Americans, which probably will relate here as well, uh, will read their horoscopes tomorrow. E every day, 70 million which really, in the adult population, is 35% of the adult population of America will read their horoscopes. 25% of Americans believe that the position of the stars and the planets affect their daily lives and their personality, personality traits. 2012, they did a survey. 34% consider astrology, not astronomy, Astrology, uh, very or sort of scientific. And amazing that we can think like that. And over the years, thankfully, many people have done experiments and have looked into it. They've, scientists have said, no, no, this is absolutely ridiculous. Because you can get twins, just take twins, born at the same time, same place, under the so-called same star sign. And are they the same? We've got twins in our household. And they are nothing alike, really. Totally different. Um, and see, when we, we look down, we are, we are seeing people who want something, want to see their future. But let me just say, if you did see a future, you'd be frightened to death, wouldn't you, most of us? Oof. <laughs> they they want to see something that is going to speak to them. And, of course, they've said many times it is absolutely wrong. Um, random. How about this guy? He was an astrologer, and he thought, well, I'll put this to the test. And he sent um, out thousands of predictions um, to 
thousands of people, but it was the same prediction, same, uh, and 94% of the readers replied that their reading was accurate and insightful. Same one to thousands of people. To top it off, the horoscope he gave out was for a local mass murderer that he'd done who had admitted to killing 63 people. All the best with that one. You see, we, sometimes they're self-fulfilling. They are something we want to hear, something we desire to hear. And sadly, uh, we think that um, if we have the answers that, it, it'll give us security. Um, it'll, uh, we'll be able to head off those disappointments, those uncertainties, those failures. They could be avoided. Ah, I wonder. I wonder. The great thing about the gospel is this. Corrie Ten Boone says, Never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. See, where we don't know, God has already gone. In the museum in London, there's an old mariner's chart uh, from 1525 before they mapped out all of North America. And um, along the coastline where they had mapped, the cartographer um, put um, different things because they hadn't been there and they didn't know what was there. So at one point he put, here be giants, uh, here be fiery scorpions, and another place he put, here be dragons. Eventually, the map came into possession of a man, came, a man named St. John Franklin, a British explorer who knew the Lord in the 1800s. Scratching out those fearful inscriptions, he wrote across the map, here be God. Here be God. And you see, when we begin to look at our future, we are all in different stages of life, aren't we? If we are young, we are um, looking maybe to our career, finishing school, finishing university, going to work, bless the Lord, um, leaving home, bless the Lord, um, uh, and all those things, we, that's what we're looking for. We're looking forward then to getting married, to having our own kids, and then causing them the same trouble you cause your parents. Um, and all those things, that's what we're looking for, aren't we? Though, when we're young, we're looking ahead. We have, we have some great ideas and dreams. And as someone said, some people, they call themselves dreamers, but they just sleepers, really. Um, and that was some of us. Um, that's when we're young. Oh, but when we're middle age, what are we looking forward to? Retirement. Having enough money for retirement. Probably not at the moment. Um, kids leaving. More holidays. Taking it easy. Maybe. What if we're old? Mature. Let's go mature. Maybe we're looking for some holidays. Maybe we're just looking to keep, make sure our health stays good. Maybe we are contemplating how many years we have left. Maybe we're contemplating maybe even money. Will we have enough money? to survive. Different stages, different ideas. What, what is our future hold? What does our future hold? Well, of course, the first thing people are asking today, what is the future of our world? Well, thankfully, God has told us what the future of the world is going to be like. I put the lovely word there. It's called entropy, which means going downhill. It's decaying. It's getting worse. Naturally, Sadly, morally, spiritually, but the Bible is very clear. That is going to happen. Um, and, and we see uh, when we talk about, um, the Bible says, Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, we, Jesus begins to talk about those last days. He talks about um, famines, pestilences, which is infections or maladies. And of course, we're just in the middle of one. Unprecedented, unpre unprecedented calamities, commotions, chaos, earthquakes. We looked at those figures the other day, but earthquakes, didn't we? Uh, those have increased. Persecution of people who know the Lord. Um, I wrote this down when I, this is a few years ago now, could be worse than that. 800 people a day, they reckon, give or take, will lose their life to, because they know, know the Lord. Now, of course, we, we can't get our heads around that, can we? Because we have no difficulties of persecution, but there are people tonight. And uh, in fact, by the time I finish speaking, there could be, I mean, is it one, every one and, uh, what did I put down? Every one and a half minutes. 
So by the time I, I finish preaching, it could be 100, 100, uh, no, not quite. Wars, nation against nation, rumors of wars, well, we don't have to, uh, again, it depends what you, because they don't put much on the, on the news at the moment, it's just all about certain things, you don't get much of what's going to happen anywhere else. But during the Boer War, which is 19th century, only 44,000 people died. First World War, that great war, the great war to end all wars, just over 30 million. Not long after World War II, they don't really know how many died. Could be up to, up to 70, 80 million people died. So we see our world decaying. One, one Timothy 4 says, in the last days, many people will be deceived. And we, we have cults arising. We have people in the church who, who say they believe Jesus, say I don't know if they say they believe the Bible anymore, um, but if the Bible doesn't fit what they believe, then the Bible doesn't actually say what it says, uh, which is, but we see that's, that's not, it doesn't take us by surprise because the Bible says that's going to happen. 2 Timothy 3, again, Paul is at the end of his life. He's sharing his heart. He says, in the last days, uh, people will be lovers themselves, boastful, proud, doing all that they want to, and uh, even in their sin, they will gloat and uh, Puff out their chest. They're not doing anything wrong. And, uh, of course, nowadays we have right, wrong, wrong, right, and goodness knows what. So the Bible is very clear about our world. Catastrophes. Um, uh, I suppose they talk about weather change. Well, the weather's always changed. There's always been climate. But there will be greater uh, climate change, and if you like to use those, those terms, because the Bible says everything is wearing down, going down. The, the only problem I, I find with the... The climate change thing, I've got no problem with cleaning up litter. That's one of my bugbears anyway. All the rubbish people chuck about and planting trees. Nothing wrong with that either because that's we've deforested many places. The problem is it's man-centered, isn't it? That we, man, will sort the problem out. Don't forget, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And uh, the problem is it puts man at the center. And we, when we get involved, what do we do? We louse it up every time. So that's the problem with it. We put man at the center of it all. But we know the Bible is very clear. Um, thankfully, the Bible also tells us, do not fear. Do not fear. Get your eyes up. The Lord is in control. The Lord is in control. And he tells us what's going to happen. And it's, it is heading in one direction where the world is looking for someone to come and bring peace and prosperity and uh, it's amazing, it doesn't matter who it is. I've said this before, 20 years ago now, if it was 20 years ago, I remember watching Bill Clinton walk into the UN after all the nonsense he was up to and having a standing ovation. Is that the Lord speaking? No, no. Um, I, having a standing ovation. And I thought at that moment, 20 years ago, if they'll do that, the UN will give him a standing ovation who was, a, you know, not a nice what he got up to, they will allow anyone. So when the Antichrist arises, of course he won't call himself that, but they will receive him because he, he'll, he'll, he'll bring prosperity, he'll bring peace, or so he says. And so they will put him in charge, put him in, in, in control for a, a particular period. But the second half of that period, it'll be, it'll be go, go pear shape then. So we see the Bible is very clear. Thankfully, you can say to me, and people can say, well, I'm not sure about that. Well, the, thankfully, the facts and the figures tell us opposite. The Bible is very clear. It predicts. And you can say, well, Damon, I'm not sure about that. Well, you tell, I'll, when, when, he, when he appears, um, I hope you know you, but when he does appear, you will know then that the Bible is true. The Bible is true. So we see the world. That's the future of the world. Dave, dear me, I'm not very happy now, but the great thing about it, what is your future? What is your future? Tonight, you may be reading your horoscopes. You may have gone out your palm read. You may be, have had tarot card readings. You may have had your tea leaves read or crystal gazing, astrology, Ouija board, seances. Goodness knows what. The Bible is very clear about all those things. They're not any good at all. They, they defile you. And the problem is it opens up a gateway well, let's call it the dark side. The dark side. And a uh, lot of lies going on there. Now, let me just say, they may pinpoint certain things in your life that you say, oh, how did they know that? Well, don't forget, the devil's a great counterfeiter. 
Don't forget that. He knows everything about your life, isn't he? It's called familiar spirits. There's spirits that know everything about you or, or, or a pinpoint in your life to, to have a go at you. So don't never think, oh, I'm not sure about that. It can be, in a sense, real, but it is counterfeit, and the Bible is very, very clear. Um, the problem is we, we get into that fatalistic idea. This is all that is. This is all that's going to happen. Thankfully, the Bible is very, very clear. He says of Israel, and this is his heart, I know the plans I have for you. Plans to bring you a, the shalom, wholeness, not calamity. Plans for a future and for hope. Of course, we do forget to read the next verse, don't we? Then you will seek me and find me if you will seek me with all your heart. There's a great future ahead of us. The sad thing about it is this. Uncertainty, which we have in our world today, um, leaves us stranded. Leaves us looking for answers. Looking around here, there, and everywhere. And let me tell you, that's why people will go to these places. We'll, we'll, and it, it doesn't make sense. The, the lines on your hands are telling you something about your future. Now, if I were to say that to you, you'd say, Dave, you're off your head, didn't you? And when we talk about astrology, we talk about planets having an influence on it, and they forget, they forget that the planets they, they were born under are not there now, they moved. Those constellations move, because we move. Oh, I didn't think about that, did you? Right, so, all those things. But you know what? When we have no hope, when there's uncertainty, we will grab onto anything. We will. We'll grab onto anything. And then God is saying, why do you turn there and turn there? And he knew people would do it because he warned them against it. He said, don't go that way. Don't do it. Don't look there because it will defile you. In fact, he's very clear. He's, he's saying it's, an, it's detestable because he knows the devil's a snake. And he, if he can get his, his claws into you, he will look that. And that's why he said, don't be polluted by the world. Don't defile yourself. Don't be spotted. We have a great present because we know who we are. Those great questions of life, Jesus answers. Who are you? Who are you? Well, I don't know who I am. No, you're a child of the living God. That's who you are. Bless the Lord. Why are you here? Well, my purpose in life is, our motto is to know him. To know the God of heaven. And in doing that, to show him to the lost and dying world. That's why we are here. And where are we going? We'll just look at that in a moment. We know it is sure, it's certain. And I, I, I think uh, Mike prayed it. No eyes see, no ears know what is comprehend, what God has prepared for us. We look at our beautiful world and we say, this world is beautiful. Even though it's fallen and broken and we've messed it up, it's beautiful. You look at those nature programs and, and you see the, the diversity and the beauty and the wonder of nature and, and, the, and the climate and different places. You think, what a beautiful, beautiful world. Well, if God did that, and this is a fallen world, how great is heaven? Fine, the Bible says, right at the end of the, of the, of the, of the uh, Bible, Revelation 21, when Revelation 22, it's heaven. What will heaven be like? No sorrow. No crying, no pain, no curse, no night, no death. What a great... That's the future that we have if we know the Lord. And that's why we can go out with boldness and present that gospel. Don't let the enemy make us quiet and timid. No, bold. Why? Because we know where we're here and we know for a future. Think about no, what future do we have outside of Christ? Ask someone what they, where they're going to go when they die. Two answers they'll tell you. There's nothing after death, or they're hoping, they've been a good person, so they may get to heaven. Isn't it? Vague, vague, no certainty, no foundation, no security, nothing certain. But the Bible says, we just read it, our inheritance is in heaven, sure, certain, cannot be tainted, cannot be defiled, cannot be taken. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. An uncertain future leaves us stranded in an unhappy present with nothing to do but wait. Nothing to do with a certain gloom 
The Bible says, again, in the last days, I think Luke 21, um, that uh, when the things are cropping up and more and more, the Bible says people will fear and people's hearts will faint. They will faint with fear from what's happening and what's going to happen to the world. And of course, if you listen to the, the uh, news, you, <laughs> you know, the, the end of the world's coming, isn't it? The end of the world's coming. Only when the Lord says. Only when the Lord says. Uh, of course, we take God out of the picture and uh, it is most, most distressing, most fearful. Thanks be to God. Um, our future, our, uh, we have nothing, nothing, no one to fear. Our future. What is our future? Well, it, depended. it is dependent on our foundation and uh, our faith, who we put our faith in, our focus, who we are looking to. That is dependent. You see, when we stand before Almighty God, the only question um, that any man, woman, boy, and girl will answer is, what have you done with Jesus? Now, for us Christians, we talked about the crowns the other day. Our, the question for us would be, what have you done for Jesus? It's a different question, because we're already in heaven. What have you done for Jesus? But every one of us is, what have you done with Jesus? What have you done with Jesus? What did he say? There is no other foundation than the one already laid, and that is in Christ. The certainty uh, of the foundation, the words of the Bible said, he is the chief cornerstone. There's no one else laid, nothing else laid. Put your life on him. The wise man, what did he do? Build his house upon the rock. Jesus defines the wise man by the one who hears and does the word. One who sees Jesus and says, what a wonderful person he is. No, no, no. But actually says, Lord, I give you my life. I, I need you. I will put my faith into you and all that you've done. The foolish man is the one who hears. He has not heard the gospel. He has not applied the gospel. He's not put his life on it. He's not built on it. And the Bible says when the storms come, and as we talk about the, the world, the Bible says in the last days, he will shake everything that can be shaken talked about that before he will shake it so we know that what we put our life on is certain and sure and eternal because everything in this world as we said about investments and the worldly success is temporal and is passing away that's why he says invest in that which is eternal get your ambition on him and who he is and that success what is that to know him to walk with him to trust him that is godly success godly success Thankfully, when the Bible says we put our, our life in his hands, what does the Bible say of us? One, uh, Psalm 139, Jeremiah 1, 5. Look, look, Dave, I created you. I knit you together in your mother's womb. And all your days are ordained before you. Jeremiah, I, I knew you from your mother's womb. I called you to be a prophet. See, what God has designed for us and called for us and planned for us is that a certainty? I wish it was. We have to choose that. We have to choose to put our life into his hands. But when we do, our future is secure. Plans and purposes that he's planned before the creation of the world are ours. Why? Because he knows us and he's got great plans for us. A great hope and a great future for us. What's this for you? Sometimes we, um, because we are part of this world, we think um, of the great difficulties. And of course, uh, he does say, you know, even when we go through difficulties, and some, some again, we talked about brothers and sisters are, he said in 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 4, he says, those momentary troubles. He's, he's bringing them down to, again, he's, he's, he's speaking in the light of eternity. You know, if you have difficulty for 80 or 90 years, in the light of eternity, they'll mean nothing, will they? And let's be honest, most of us have had a good, good life, a great life. We've had difficulties, we've had humps along the way, but we've had no serious trouble from start to finish, have we? And even if they are, the Bible says they are momentary difficulties, and that's why he says, get your eyes on that which is eternal. 
Because that which is moment is far outweighed by eternity and the glory of eternity. 70, 80, 90, 100 years compared to eternity it doesn't even make sense. It doesn't even compute because eternity is so, well, we, again, our minds can't get a, 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 around it. Some went to Barry yesterday. You know what? Eternity is like, if you went to Barry once a year, which is probably enough, isn't it? Um, <sighs> eternity is certainly as busy. And you brought a bucket of sand home every year. Bucket of sand home every year. See, by the time you empty the beach in Barry of sand, eternity would only just begun. Eternity would have only just begun. You say, well, that is an awesome thought. And sometimes we, and, and I, the Lord challenged me the other day, sometimes we can talk glibly, can't we, about eternity and about hell especially. Remember, remember, that alone should grip our hearts with such fire and a passion and a burden because we've got family, every one of us has got family that don't know the Lord that if tonight their future stopped in time, would be in eternity. And so we're not glib with, et- with, 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 with eternity because eternity is real. In, in a million years' time, we'll be conscious, alive in one of two places. That is a fact. That's what the Bible says. But you know what? The great thing about the future, the in- if we put our foundation on him, if we put our faith in him, if we are looking to him, the Bible says our, our security is in him. We can't, he can't fail. It is sure. It's secure. I love the word. It's sublime. No eye has seen, no ear is heard. And it is eternal. It is eternal. What a great gospel we have. That's why he says, put your life in him. Don't worry about tomorrow. Don't we do? Jesus said, no, he, he didn't give us the option. I know you worry, as he said. I, 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 no, he says, don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow has enough difficulty of his own. Live to Jesus. Look to him today. Why? Because he holds tomorrow in his hands. It's a good old song there, isn't it? I know holds the future, and I know he holds my hand. So, our great gospel tonight. Future, well, it is... Who knows what it's going to be personally? Who knows how long you're going to be here? Oh, you could live to 110. Bless the Lord. Hope you're fit and healthy then, mind. Uh, it's no fun when you're 110, you're not feeling so good. But you know what? Irrespective of how long, where is your future going to be? Those at home, do you know the Lord? Is your foundation on him? Is your faith in him? Is your sight looking towards him? Otherwise, we have an uncertain future. In this world, and a certain future when we get to the other world, but it's not going to be heaven. But the great gospel tonight is if we put our life and our faith in him, it can be a sure, certain future. Bless the Lord. And if we're young, thankfully God has got great purposes and plans. If we put our life in his hands, what a great, great life we'll have. Will it be, will it be difficulty free? No, no, no. Oh, no. You can have difficulties and problems. But you know what? He will be with you. He will walk with you because he said, I will never leave you, never forsake you. you come in, if I come in, it's a certainty. Bless the Lord tonight. What a great gospel we have. Jesus said these words. Um, do not, we read these so often at funerals, but they are the greatest words. Do not let your hearts be in trouble. Trust in God, trust also in me. Listen to the future. In my Father's house there are many places, many mansions. If it were not so, I wouldn't have told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. Remember what dad's saying, he's been praying it, preparing it for 2,000 years. What a place it'll be. What a place it'll be. And if I go and prepare a place, I'm going to come back and take you to be with me. And, you, and he said, you know the way I'm going. You know the place I'm going. You know how to get there. Thankfully, Thomas comes. He's the good job of Thomas. We, we sometimes call him Doubting Thomas. But if we wouldn't Doubting Thomas, we wouldn't have this question. And we wouldn't know the answer. Thomas said, mm, Lord, I'm not sure about this. I doubt this. We don't know where you're going. And we don't know the way. <laughs> Thomas, Thomas. And these eternal words from heaven. I am the way. The truth and life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know me and have seen him. Bless the Lord. 
What a great future. Future now, the Bible says, I've come to give you a life and that abundant. But that pales into insignificance to our eternal future. Bless the Lord. All that we put our faith and our hope and our trust in him. There was a group of botanists who were on expedition in the Alps looking for different species and different varieties of um, flowers and, and all kind of flora fauna. It's amazing that even today we don't know what's on the earth and we're finding new things all the time and certainly in the sea they haven't got a clue what's going on. Um, but as they were looking, um, they came to the top of this particular mountain, there was a big gorge down and uh, they, they were looking with their binoculars and they, 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 one of the guys said, That's, I've never seen that flower before. Uh, how are we going to get down there? It means we're going to have to rope someone up and throw them over the side. And they thought, that's dangerous. That's... And as they were there, there were local children about, and they thought, oh, it's an idea. And one young lad, they said, oh, do you fancy doing something for us? We'll give a couple of bob. And they said, well, what do we want you to do? They said, we, we want you to get down in the gorge. We'll tie you up with a rope. We'll hold you. We've got a couple of strong guys. And I uh, picked that, we, we, we guide you on that flower. We want, because we'd never seen it before. He said, oh, I'm not sure about that, he said. He said, let me have a think about it. A few hours later, he came back. And with him was a, an older gentleman. He said, I'll go over the cliff. Now, he said, he said, as long as he holds the rope. Oh. What, do you think he's stronger than the other, other men? No, but he's my dad. But he's my dad. And the great thing about it is, is wherever we, God takes us, even to those places we think are dangerous and we don't know what's happening, and uh, the future is that man in a moment could be changed, could be changed in a moment to visit the doctor, can be changed. The great thing about it, our father's got hold of us. It doesn't matter where he takes us, where, in a sense, he, he hangs us over the precipice, we think he's got hold of us. And that's why we have a great future. That's why we have a great gospel. Oh, we know what's happening for our world. We don't know what's going to happen to each other. All we do know is that heaven is our destination. Secure, sure, sublime, eternal. Because we built our life on him. Let's pray. Thank you, Father. What a great gospel we have. Oh, we, Lord, we know it, but help us to show it and live it to those around us. Lord, we have a world lost Lord, it should break our heart. We have family, friends, neighbors that don't know you. Their future is uncertain. Lord, they're looking here, looking there. We want to be mouthpieces for the gospel. They can be sure and secure tonight. Lord, their eternity can be absolutely certain. Lord, help us to live it. Help us to show it. In your name we pray. Put your hand upon us. This week we pray. Amen.